I felt like anger was more, in many cases, anger is more effective, I guess, it's more useful. You were angry in there? I wouldn't say I was angry, but if I started to feel negative, I could turn it into frustration or anger, which I could at least alleviate with 2,000 push-ups. Right. It's, it's better than feeling sorry for myself. Right. I feel like if I had to choose one of the two outlets, deciding to use controlled anger was more beneficial than sitting around feeling sorry for myself. I don't ever believe in moping or feeling sad. So when I was at my worst, perhaps I was a little bit angry. But then again, I also think I do that in my normal life. If I'm honest, I don't think anger is a necessarily bad thing. Mm -hmm. I think that misdirected anger is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I think if you get very angry about scenarios and you put it in the correct direction, you get unlimited motivation and you get a lot done. Anger, anger can be used as a fuel and it's necessary. And from my framework, anger sometimes is a mask for pain. I'd, ag I'd agree with that. So did you experience pain in there? I know that pain is a, you know, a kind of an abstract word but was it painful for you? Like, I wanna know about your pain. Yeah, it's strange because I'm being as honest as possible. It's strange because I had this instilled sense of duty where even though I'm in a jail cell and I can't leave, and even though I'm cripplingly bored, I don't feel like I had time to feel pain, or I didn't feel like I had time to be a victim. You had nothing but time. No, I didn't have time. What are you talking about? Because everyone outside still relied on me. So I, I, I when I would get on the phone, people would say, Is that avoidance though? I don't know. Do you keep busy? Do you avoid your feelings by keeping busy, being on the computer all the time? All, all the things I had to do still had to be done. Just because they sure. threw me in a cell, it just made it more difficult, which means I have less time than ever because the difficulty's been increased. And when I would get on the phone, we wouldn't discuss how I'm feeling. I'd be worried about how everyone else is. They'd be like, how are you? Yeah, I'm in jail. What's going on with this? Are you okay? Are your bills paid? Are press hassling you? I was worried about fixing everyone else's problems from jail more than I was concerned about myself or my own mental well-being. And when I, if I felt particularly, when I say pain, pain an, is, is an awkward one. I don't know if I felt pain because I don't feel sorry for myself and I've developed this mindset of such absolute accountability that even though what happened to me I believe was unfair and even though I'm completely innocent, I didn't think, ah, why, I didn't, I didn't think why is this happening? I didn't think why me? I didn't think oh, this is unfair. Like none of these things crossed my mind. I was like, this is garbage. However, you can't become the most Google man in the world right. without, uh, with every light has a dark, right? <laughs> like, let's be realistic about this. Yeah. Uh, I'm thrown in a jail cell. Do I belong here? No, but am I here? Yes. I was pretty logical about it. And I was like, okay, I've got a lot of things I need to get done. And I would feel angry if I couldn't get them done. But I don't think I felt pain. Now, I'll admit, I don't sleep very well since I've left. Why? I could admit Do you that. know why? I heard you say in one interview that you have nightmares. I do have nightmares. Yeah. What, are, what are your nightmares about? I don't think they're about anything. I just have like almost like an adrenaline rush out of nowhere while I'm sleeping and I, I chew up. I bolt awake. No thoughts, no memories, no No visions. real thoughts, no real story. Fear, that's fear. I guess it is, yeah. So there's, there's so let's just, you know, you're unconscious, we would, let's, yeah. you know, the uh, dreams are a reflection of the unconscious. And if you're having nightmares, there must be some unresolved fear that wants to get worked out. I believe so, but then also, I love the idea of that. This is the, the, the of, of having unresolved fear. That sounds like the most interesting thing in the world to me. If, if someone were to say to me, Andrew, take this pill and your unresolved fear will vanish. I would say absolutely and utterly not. That's not fun. The fun is there's something in my mind which I don't have complete control or complete understanding of yet. And it's not detrimenting my day-to-day -day life really. Okay, I lose a bit of sleep, but this sounds like an interesting journey. It sounds like I'm in a new level of the video game and I've been thrust into a dark forest and I get to do something brand new. And I'm, I'm, I'm really genuinely not worried about it. You're not, wor yeah, you shouldn't be worried about it. It's I'm just where you it. are. I'm not worried about it and I'm also not like, oh, I need to fix this. I don't care. I'll well, have nightmares and I'll wake up and then I'll either go back to sleep or I'll continue to work and that's well, life. Maybe life will keep giving you situations in which you'll have to confront that fear to resolve it. Why would I want to resolve it? Well, because... I mean, if I'm really well, that tired, I'll sleep. No, but, but, but fear creates distortions in our mind, right? I mean, fear is the seed of evil. Yeah. Right? And so we want to know what we're afraid of because if we block our fear, we're susceptible to bad actions, right? Yeah. And 
fooling ourselves yeah. about what they are rationalizing. Yeah. So I would argue that it's, it's actually vital for you in the position that you are in and the responsibility that you have to con actually confront your fear in a very real way, which probably goes back to your childhood. I mean, your dad was, I mean, I'm, you know, the haircut story, and I, I don't know if you want to talk about that, if you're willing, but that's it. You know, when I read that, I'm thinking about that little boy. It must have been fucking terrifying. It is, but I do think I had the best father on earth. I'm not, I'm not disputing that. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of good that came from your father. I'm not yeah. disputing that your father was a good man. Yeah. When you say he could go from zero to a hundred like that, that for a little boy, it's scary. It's fucking scary. It is. But and I, that fear has to be in you. You don't know what the fuck he's going to do. Yeah, completely. Yeah. But that's, I think that's prepared me for life fantastically. And I of also, course. and I also think the fear. But have you reached a limit? Have, of have you, well, of the video game. I mean, you're, you're, you're facing all these charges, yeah. right? So something, and maybe this is what you need to go through. I mean, you're on the hero's journey, yeah. right? And this is inevitable in some way, but also along the hero's journey, you have to die to be reborn. That's true. And I agree with all of that. But if I'm genuinely, I mean, I psychoanalyze myself all the time, which is one of the main reasons I don't believe in therapy and psycho, psychoanalysis. Of course you can. <laughs> I do. I do it myself. You don't think that's hubris? No. I you think, can know your own mind. That you don't need reflection from others to, to see yourself. That you I can think, see yourself perfectly. I think that no. I don't think I can see myself perfectly. But I think that life is a perfect reflection. But why I, not get help? Why Why not? Like because because then it becomes a crutch. I like the idea that I can rely on myself to fix myself. Well, you have a coach. Is that a crutch? No, it's not because he's teaching me What's something. What's the difference? That's fine. But like, if I had an affliction, I would like to be my own doctor. And I think with your mind, you can do a lot of it yourself. And I think if you have a very strict framework and how you measure how successful you are as a human, and I do it through competence and achievement, I say, which mindset do I need to achieve as much as I can possibly achieve? Right. And I can measure that in real time. I can measure that in literally dollars and world championship title belts. I can literally measure the success. Mm -hmm. I'll say, okay, well then these are the mindset I need to have to be as successful as possible. Anything that's deviating me away from that needs to be addressed and, and concerned and, and dealt with. And I can do that myself. And I think the fear that if, I, if it's fear that's waking me up from nightmares now, it's just because I understand there's a very big apparatus, a very big enemy, which I cannot destroy and I cannot be coming to get me. Mm -hmm. So I do think that wakes me up. I think the fear is healthy. I think I'd be stupid to not be afraid. But I don't necessarily want the fear to go away because I have no problems feeling bad. Well, it's not about going away. It's coming into deeper relationship with it and, and, and understanding that there's fear that's happening in real time, but there's also fear that may be in your psyche somewhere, in your body that's connected to your history. And that may need to be resolved because otherwise you're projecting things out that may you may not be seeing reality totally clearly that's the thing right like is there a way that you're not seeing things perfectly clearly well then we go back to my what i just said about perhaps that's true but if i measure myself purely on competence and purely on achievement whatever i think and whatever i'm doing is obviously fantastic so i'm very happy with the mindset i have and then we go into the argument which is a level deeper is do am i supposed to be happy Am I supposed to feel good? No, it's not happy. No, of course, but this is what I don't understand about people, especially men in the world today. Why are they say, so worried about being afraid? Why are they so worried about, I was afraid every time I fought. Yeah. I fought anyway. Yeah. Like, I don't let fear guide what I'm gonna do. I do what I'm supposed to do regardless of how I feel. So I don't see anything wrong with feeling fearful. I don't see anything wrong with feeling stressed or under pressure or anxious. All these things men are trying to get rid of. And I talk about men specifically. I gender this because I'm a man. I don't know how it feels to be a woman. But all these things that people are trying very hard to get rid of from their brains, I don't see why they need to leave. I will argue the point that if I feel anxious and pressured and stressed and fearful, I will get more done than if I was happy. I think if I was happy, I'd just be hedonistic and just wasting my time. I think that you get a whole bunch done with these negative connotations and negative emotions. And I think that life is suffering and pain and you're here to go through it. And, you're, and the sooner you get used to the taste, the more successful you're gonna be. I have no interest in trying to change the flavor, my friend. The flavor of life is pain and I will eat all of it. And it doesn't matter if they put me back in jail or not. I, I'm not sitting there going, how can I be happy in jail? I will sit in jail and say, yes, this sucks. It's supposed to suck. Yes, I'm not enjoying this. Yes, I'm anxious and paranoid. And yes, that guy might stab me. And yes, I can't sleep and I miss my family. And this is what's supposed to happen to me. And this is how I become the best man I can possibly be. And I'm gonna succeed regardless. <laughs> you're very convincing you're so good though right it's almost like i feel like you can rationalize anything right it's almost like a trick 
Magic trick? Well, you're really good at talking, you're really smart, and it's almost like any question you can turn well, and, 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 and make it work for you, which is great, it's a skill, but yeah. there's also a place where there's the potential yeah. for self-delusion. Oh, absolutely. And I'm not even gonna sit here and say that I'm not delusional to a degree. I'm not saying that self-delusion well, doesn't we exist. Are. We yeah. all are, right? Let me give you a very simple example. Let me try and use an analogy. I think the only thing better than having everything you want is not wanting anything. Right, so I have every car on this planet. I have 40 mm -hmm. supercars. Most people want a supercar, I have 40. But there's that unique 0.1% of people who genuinely don't want one. And I think that's more freeing than having everything you want, right? So the, the, the true mindset is not wanting anything. Most people, the best they can do is having everything they want. And I feel like you can kind of do this with the emotions as well, I guess. My general consensus is that I don't think I can change or affect the world to the point where pain and suffering and bad things are not gonna happen. So isn't it best if I just enjoy all of that? Doesn't that make me as powerful as possible if I say, oh yeah, okay, this is gonna suck, good. I mean, I do it when I fight. Uh -huh. Yesterday I was fighting, right? We were right. doing 12 rounds and all of us were destroyed and the more he hurt me, the more I wanted to hurt him back. The more he hurt me, the better it felt. The more powerful I felt, the more he hit me. Because then it's my turn, right? So if I can't stop him from punching me, and I'll do my best, but if I can't, then surely you should learn to enjoy it, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't think you can stop life from hitting you. And I don't think you can stop life from giving you unexpected surprises. And I don't think you can stop yourself from feeling sometimes sad or anxious or upset. So I think the best mindset you could adopt is finding that engaging and mm -hmm. exciting. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie to you. Although I am facing very serious charges and although they are trying to destroy my life and although I cannot sleep the same and although they're out to get me and although I've suffered, part of me is excited. Part of me is like, okay. Why? Because it's a war. Uh -huh. you, you like war. I think all men do. Uh -huh. I do. Yeah, of course, all yeah. men do. Yeah. So it's a battle. It's exciting. Yeah, it's exciting. So I'm not saying I'm glad it happened because I'm certainly not. And I'm not saying I'm gonna win. But I'm saying, I'm saying that I've trained myself to the point where if I were walking down the street and 10 men were to pull knives on me, I'd be intimidated, but 20% of me would go, this, this is gonna be, this we want to remember. <laughs> do you have a belief that you could take 10 men with knives? I have a belief that, yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. Because that's, I, but that that's is, delusional. That's delusional. Yeah, but it makes me, it gives me a best chance of possibly winning. Well, no, running away would give you the best chance of, of possibly I'm winning. Not, and not, then coming back and being safe and then serving out your mission. Of course I, mean, I would run away in that scenario. But, okay. if, I, but if I had to engage them, if I had, yeah, if I had to engage them, right. if I had to fight them, I believe I'd be the most capable if I believed I could win. Of course. So for that reason, if I have to self-delude, then I will self-delude and I will convince myself that I am here to destroy all 10 of them. And I will say it in a way where at least seven of them believe me. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important part sometimes mm -hmm. about all of this self-delusion is that a lot of other people start to believe what you say. And I'm not saying that I say bad things. If a man were to sit in, in front of you and say, I can rip your head off with my little finger, mm -hmm. and he said it in the right terms, and he truly believed it in his heart, you wouldn't want him to try. As, as ridiculous as that sounds, you'd be like, kind of big, maybe. You know, it crosses your mind. So I think that, yeah, I have psychoanalyzed myself, even though I'm not officially, you know, certified and I've decided that I can't stop bad things from happening to me so instead I'm going to enjoy bad things happening to me and I'm going to build a mindset that makes me fearsome enough to succeed regardless of how stacked the odds are against me yeah yeah and I, and I appreciate your mindset and it's well thought out and it's useful to you and so I'm not I'm just pushing up against the places where I think there might be contradictions I li and I like to hear it yeah. I like to hear it but like, right, like I said right now, I'm not a coward. And, and I wanna make this very clear, I'm not a coward. I don't care if I don't sleep again for the rest of my life. I refuse to take any fucking pill and I refuse to sit and have my mind altered by anything I do not control. I don't care if I have nightmares for the rest of human time. Right. As long as I'm in charge of my mind, I'm in charge of my life. If God decides that I don't need nightmares anymore, I'll fathom out how to stop it. If God decides I need to wake up in the middle of the night in a sweat, fearful or afraid they're coming to get me, then that's God's plan for me and that's what I'm gonna deal with. I'm not a coward, I'm not afraid of any of these things. I'm not afraid of feeling bad. I'm not afraid of anxiety, I'm not afraid of panic. This is one of the things I think a lot of men out there struggle with is they're so worried and afraid of bad feelings. And, and to me, that's just showing that you've had an easy life. Like there's real people out here who are trying to kill you. There's people out here who put a knife in your neck. You're scared of what, feeling sad? Who cares? 
Like, th there's real problems. What are you worried about feeling sad for? Who gives a shit? I could feel sad for the rest of my life, and I guarantee, one, nobody would know, and two, I would be monumentally successful regardless. So, who, so why are we even talking about it? I have no fear for a negative feeling. I have fear for me not being able to provide for my children. I have fear for people who rely on me not being provided for and cared for, but I don't have a single, I don't wake up and go, oh, I really am worried if I might feel sad today. Who cares? Who cares? I can be happy or sad on the same day. Nobody notices and the same things get done. The exact same amount of work gets done. Nothing changes.